We're all familiar with the infamous blue screen of death on Windows, but did you know that there are efforts being led to introduce it to Linux as well? If you haven't seen one of these in Windows, consider yourself very lucky because it can be a common occurrence for many people where you get the screen that gives you a sad face and tells you that there's a problem. The problem gets collected and sent off to Microsoft typically, and you get a QR code. Well, Linux really doesn't have anything like this, but it seems that it is coming to Linux. So what's the importance and is the blue screen of death actually useful for us in Linux. We're going to talk about that, but I do want to let you know about the efforts already in play to get the blue screen of death on Linux. That's right. Some of you may know about a recent push by systemd, which is a system and service manager on Linux operating systems that manages the initialization of the system, system services and processes in Linux. So what we'll see here, if we look up BSOD, we'll see this little hint here that's given to us about a new component called system BSOD has been added, which can show logged error messages full screen if they have a log level of log emergency or emerge. This component is experimental and its public interface is subject to change. Now, for those of you who didn't catch on, BSOD just means blue screen of death. And this was set and released in version 255 of system D. Although it's just in a testing phase where they're experimenting with it, it does show promise that we're getting the blue screen of death on Linux. Now, I know a lot of you will probably groan at this point because why bring something from Windows over to Linux? That has been trolled on for decades at this point. Well, we're gonna talk about that, but overall the community sediment here seems positive. A lot of people actually appreciate the fact that BSOD features are being put into Linux, albeit slowly. And it's quite obvious why that's the case, because if you start going through and investigating the kernel logs, it can be a complete mystery to what is going on, unless you have a PhD in computer science in some cases. All jokes aside, it is really hard to read some of the logs unless you have a very good understanding of not only memory maps, but a lot of technical jargon. So the idea here that systems are adapting and using the blue screen of death and bringing it over from Windows can actually be a good thing. There's also been the blue screen of death, as we can see here. This is actually Linux being used on a Beagle board with the new DRM panic infrastructure contributed here by Jocelyn Philamp. This is posted by Javier Martinez. We can see a first implementation of a kernel panic blue screen of death that says reboot your computer. We even got a penguin in the corner prompting you that there's some Something wrong, which is a quite an interesting development. And this is all part of a push of another part of the kernel. The direct rendering manager DRM is adding panic handling. In this patch set, the output of kernel messages on the display during a panic, we now have the responsibility of a driver to provide a frame buffer with a virtual mapping that messages can be rendered on. Only linear RGB is supported in this current version. With that in mind, the DRM, which is responsible for graphics rendering in the Linux kernel, is getting an effort to enhance its panic handling by introducing a blue screen of depth in itself. Well, not necessarily just the blue screen of death. Of course, like they said, it's a virtual mapping where messages can be rendered on. It doesn't mean it has to be blue and display messages exactly like Windows does, but it does give us the opportunity to do this. So why are many subsystems pushing for this? Well, a big purpose of the DRM, like I said earlier, was to manage graphics drivers and render graphics directly to the display from hardware. So it's nice to know when something goes wrong with your display and your graphics drivers, especially if there's a fatal error from which the system cannot recover gracefully. This type of panic handling by introducing a blue screen of death is going to enhance the ability to diagnose what's actually going on during a critical error scenario. So I'm definitely down for this because in the past, we would have had to look at kernel logs, which a lot of us can understand how painful that can be. Things like using dmessage to check out kernel messages or journal CTL for additional logs. It's a pain to go through all that, especially if you can't boot your system. Imagine not being able to boot the system. Well, then you have to really just go for a live disk and mount over to the system just to check out what's going on with the kernel logs. That's painful, but with the blue screen of death and being able to display what's going on, perhaps it can be even better by getting QR encoding. While it can be frustrating to get the blue screen of death, being able to add things like QR encoding when you get a kernel panic or perhaps something wrong with the graphics is a fantastic way of trying to debug what's actually going on. So not only being able to add things like QR encoding so you can figure out what type of messages or errors that you're getting. Here's another proposed idea of actually adding that in. Now, whether or not they actually implement it, that's still being decided. Well, some other reasons B SODs are nice include one debug information. You get straightforward debug information that can even generate things like a dump file containing the information. And it lets you know, hey, this is where that information is located. Or perhaps it gives you an error code that you can then look up further offline. That way you don't have to use your computer to see that information, especially if it's crashed and it's in a state that you can't 
started anyway. Other reasons is just plain old user awareness. Sometimes you don't even realize why your system is freezing, but the blue screen of death is a clear indicator that something has gone wrong on the system. It then tells the user, hey, you need to do something about this, address either a hardware or software issue, and it's a clear signal. So I definitely appreciate that. Although again, Windows gets a little bit too many of them, but Linux is definitely no exception to the case, especially when you're dealing with graphics drivers, it can be a pain sometimes to get things right. Anyways, three, preventing hardware damage is another important thing here. Why would it protect from hardware damage? Well, in some cases, when the blue screen of death pops up, you know that there was an issue. And if it stemmed from a hardware issue, it can prevent you from damaging it by not only stopping it immediately and giving you that message, but it gives you a clue to what actually caused it. That way you can investigate before trying to restart the system and causing another crash and another crash until you figure it out. Oh, wait a minute. There's some problem in the background happening and I wasn't alerted by the system, at least not in a useful way. Instead, you would probably have to dig in the logs, even though your system is still crashing, which we all know is a pain. So these are just a few good reasons to have a blue screen of death or at least some sort of graphical messaging system, hopefully being introduced to Linux. I don't know if we're going to get to see the frowny face or a smiley face next time we get the blue screen of death, but just understand that there are developments coming to Linux. Let me know if you're excited about this development. It'll be interesting to see what the community has to say about this. Will it bring benefits? Do you see some negatives here to applying the blue screen of death to Linux? I wanna know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you made it this far, think about subscribing below. Make sure to smash that like button for me. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.